This is a lecture by Farouk Olemi, narrated by Ungad Buttar. This is the third and final lecture on self-experiments. To do a causal analysis, we need to establish several facts. First, causes should precede effects. The causes of exercise should precede participation in exercise. This is almost always the case if we select the causes and constraints listed in the diary judiciously. The second criteria is that when the cause is present, exercise should be likely. There should be an association between the presence of the cause and the occurrence of the exercise. This we can establish through analysis of the diary data. Last, we need to make sure that if the cause was absent and there were no other causes of exercise present, then exercise would have been unlikely. In other words, we need to make sure that the listed causes are the mechanism by which the exercise occurs. Statements such as, I exercise when I am motivated, will not be helpful even though they are true. Of course you exercise when you are motivated, but what gets you motivated? The causes of exercise listed should describe a process after which exercise occurs. There are several ways to analyze the diary data. Three among these are main effect logistic regression, Bayesian network analysis, and causal analysis. These approaches can be applied to small data sets such as data from one person's diary. In the first method, we establish the relationship among exercise and causes through a series of regressions. First, exercise pattern is regressed on all causes. This will tell us that simultaneous effect of multiple causes. Then, exercise pattern is regressed on each cause. This will tell us the, the true impact of the cause by itself on exercise. From these two regressions, we can estimate a minimum and a maximum probability of exercise if the cause was present. Because of the small data set, we can use logistic regression only to estimate main effects and not a combination of factors. Therefore, in this approach, we get to estimate the effect of rain and the effect of planning to bike to work separately and not in combination. A more reasonable approach might need to examine some combination effects. In the second method, we use the conditional independence among the listed causes to find a set of relationships among the causes as well as among the cause and exercise. This approach uses artificial intelligence tools to identify the likely causes of exercise and estimate the strength of such causes. In the last method, we combine the knowledge of the domain with data obtained from the client. In this approach, we use the fact that the client has already told us what he thinks are constraints on a specific causes. First, if a constraint has made a cause ineffective, we modify the data and treat the day as if that cause was not present. Second, we estimate the probability of exercise when the cause is present by reducing the data to all days in which the cause is present. In this reduced sample, the percent of days in which the client exercised shows the maximum influence of the cause on exercise. The reasons we refer to this as a maximum probability is because exercise has multiple causes and we are ignoring these other causes as as possible reason for exercise in the calculation of maximum probability. In the third step, we reduce the sample size again, but this time we drop days in which other causes are made present. We repeat our calculation in this reduced sample. This is a minimum probability of exercise due to this cause as in this method of calculation there are no other reasons for why the exercise occurred. Let's show the actual data analysis. Recall our original data, which we have modified by combining rain and commute by biking. 
every day, we were planning to commute with the bike and it rained. We treat it as if we were not planning to, planning to commute with the bike. We change the zeros and ones so that if it rains, the commuting with the bike would have a zero for its value. To examine the effect of showering at the gym, we reduced the data to all days in which we were planning to shower at the gym. There are a total of seven such days shown in this slide, and the probability of exercise is six out of the seven days. This is the maximum probability of exercise. If we reduce the days further to any day in which no other reasons for exercise area are present, then we are down to four days. These are days 5, 8, 12, and 13. And these four exercises occurs every day. This data in this slide shows the calculated probability of exercise given various causes. The plan to commute by biking to work leads to exercise every time it is present. The plan to shower at the gym leads to exercise between 86 and 100% of the time. Sleeping early does not have as big an impact. Recall the original causal chart drawn by the client. We can now redraw this chart to show what we learned from the analysis of the diary. This slide shows the original causal chart drawn weighted by the impact of each cause. The larger the impact, the larger the font size for the cause. Sleeping early has little impact, but biking to work has a lot larger impact. This information is used by the client to gain insight into their behavior. It should be clear that it is possible to analyze small data from patients to help them understand the impact of various causes and constraints on their behavior. Please use the course website to ask a question and rate this lecture.